Okay. Hi everyone. So welcome to a new video. Um, I think this is video six, something like that. Um, so today I will be reading some interesting ex excerpts that I found from the egg in the sperm and that's by Emily Martin. So I guess I'll just jump right in. Um, so overall, I would say that my first impression of the reading was that I was very angry because it really exposed a lot of the true deep meaning behind a lot of these medical texts that really reflect and like portray women in a certain negative way. And it was interesting because as I have personally read a lot of medical texts um, because I've taken a lot of science classes such as anatomy and physiology, um, but you don't really look at the way that they use their language in a certain way. You don't really look closely into the certain terms that they use to describe certain things. So that's why I found this to be very interesting. And um, so the first uh, little passage that I found, it was on page 3 of the PDF. And it said, By extolling the female cycle as a productive enterprise, Menstruation must necessarily be viewed as a failure. Medical texts describe menstruation as the debris of the uterine lining, the result of necrosis or death of tissue. And I just thought that this specific line was very interesting because the way that they use the certain words such as must and failure to describe this process was very interesting because personally menstruating is not fun like anyone can say that there's a lot of things that go into it like women get cramps and they get bothered by a lot of things just by doing it and it's not a fun process so it was very interesting to see how they would downplay it because really i'm going to assume that the author's well, most of them that wrote these medical texts, they're probably male, and they never gone through menstru menstruation or any other, I'm going to say, painful process like that because it really is hard. Um, so they don't know what it's really like to have to go through this, who have to go through the motions because, I mean, for some people, it's very emotional. That's why. And also, I'd like to point out that the going back to the word choice must and failure that first sentence is sounds like um more of a command like it's saying that menstruation as it said is a failed productive occurrence so it's saying that there is fault in being a woman that it is your fault for being a woman and having to go through this and that's what i took of it and then during the next um, passage that I found, this came from a text called Molecular Biology of the Cell that the author included. And it began on page five of the PDF and it started with, during the 40 or so years of a woman's reproductive life, only 400 or 500 to 500 eggs will have been released. That, that's what the authors write. And then they include, all the rest will have degenerated. It is still a mystery why so many eggs are formed only to die in the ovaries. And even more interesting, she hits back with, the real mystery is why the male's vast production of sperm is not seen as wasteful. Because as she said after that, men, they make like about 100 million sperm per day. That's trillions over a lifetime and they waste way more in the sperm than a woman with eggs so why are the authors not saying that that's wasteful too why is it only that the eggs dying that's the only wasteful part that's what i found interesting from that and then i really looked at the key phrase only to die because when you say that you only have something for it just to die it takes away the importance of the subject you were saying that the eggs are useless because they're only going to die. It's like you're taking away the importance of the woman and her having to go through this process 
because the eggs are only going to die like the sperm is only going to die like the ones that don't reach the egg or fully fulfill their purpose as you say so it's um really just as i said earlier it's downplaying the struggle of what it means to be a woman that was my interpretation of that and then i found another little part at the end um well not the end but this was page 10 in the pdf and this is what I wrote my rhetorical statement on um, because uh, it starts with although this new version of the saga of the egg and the sperm broke through cultural expectations the researchers who made the discovery continue to write papers and abstracts as if the sperm were, were the active party who attacks binds and penetrates the egg and I found this to be particularly intriguing because She's not just acknowledging the negative anymore. She's acknowledging that, okay, although there's a little change happening, um, this is still happening, but she is acknowledging that it's not just like this, like how she said it's breaking through the cultural expectations, this new research that's coming in. And I had written that in this sentence, Martin qualifies her argument that Despite the fact newfound research is showing the equal strenu strenuous tasks of both the egg and the sperm, respectively, there are still reports and papers being produced that solely work to highlight the more active role of the male sperm. And by active role, I mean that the sperm is doing more of the work. That's what I interpret what she's saying. And I found this to be very interesting because she has a lot of uh like good points she has a lot of the points that really show how it's true what she's saying that biology although you don't think that it go it's going to portray um these occurrences in certain ways they still do possibly unintentionally but it's still it's the language that you choose, the specific words that you use to describe what it means to ovulate, to menstruate. These are not supposed to be associated with weak things that women do. They're supposed to be seen as just as impressive as it is to make sperm. And yeah, that's why I found this text to be overall very um, great. It's actually probably one of my favorites. But, um, yeah, those are the key points that I like to look at.